Hi guys. It is a gray, gloomy, rainy day here in the soon-to-be underwater what's left of the paradise of Fort Myers, Florida, where the little dog Sancho Panza and I have stumbled into on... We have made it to February. Unbelievable. We have washed up in February 1st, 2020. Do you believe it? One month down and the opening bell of 2020 has sounded here at Collapse Chronicles. And uh, this is your first time here. My name is Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And we just kind of travel around a, a collapsing planet chronicling the collapse. Uh, and so today, uh, we're going to head over, I think, to Tibet. I think we're going to Tibet today. And let me set the little dog aside. Where uh, I want to thank our my right hand, well, I can't say my right hand man anymore. My new right hand woman here, uh, our Lieutenant Sarah Lim from Singapore. I believe Sarah was the one who sent me today's winner of the Chronicle of the Collapse for February 1st, 2020 from none other than Popular Mechanics. Popular Mechanics with their headline, Welp, scientists found 28 new virus groups in a melting glacier. This is how the world ends. So as the uh, rest of the mainstream media talks about the coronavirus, we're going to hear about 28 entire new groups of viruses that will probably be in the headlines soon enough take it away popular mechanics okay uh, la, la, la. it is the stuff of a stephen king novel researchers from china and the u.s embarked on a field trip to tibet and discovered 28 previously undiscovered virus groups in one melting glacier. They recently detailed their findings in a paper posted to the non-peer-reviewed website BioRxiv. Okay. The researchers drilled a 164-foot hole into the glacier gathered two ice core samples from the 15,000 year old glacier and then later identified them in a lab. In total, they identified 33 groups of viruses from these two samples from one glacier in Tibet, 28 of which were completely new to science from Tibet to the Arctic to Antarctica, glaciers and ice, and ice caps around the world are melting at an alarming rate. Scientists are racing the clock and climate change to collect, identify, and catalog the microbes being found in ancient ice. Having a record of these bacteria, viruses, and fungi paints a sharper picture of our prehistoric past and, more importantly, could be, could be valuable for use in studying future pathogens. Can you say the coronavirus on steroids? <clears throat> Meltwater from glaciers and ice caps could then ferry, F-E-R-R-Y, then could ferry these harmful pathogens along streams, rivers, and other important waterways, potentially exposing humans <coughs> to
to the new microbes the researchers report. But ice is not the only thing that is melting on our planet. <clears throat> Thawing permafrost, well, temperfrost as I prefer, Thawing permafrost, a frozen layer, can you say a previously frozen layer of Earth found in high latitudes and, uh, and elevations, creates its own unique set of challenges. <clears throat> Gases like methane and carbon dioxide, which have been trapped in the long frozen, now melting Earth, <clears throat> are being released into the atmosphere at alarming rates. They love this term, alarming rates. Permafrost houses twice as much carbon than what is currently found in our atmosphere. Ha! Ah. <clears throat> In recent years, researchers have pulled samples of smallpox, Spanish flu, bubonic plague, and even anthrax from thawing permafrost. Scientists have also found harmful pollutants such as mercury trapped in the reservoirs between Alaskan melting permafrost. Let's don't forget the doomsday vault. And then there's the structural damages associated with the thawing permafrost. Swedish Nuclear Waste Management, a company that stores uh, Swedish, Finnish, and Canadian spent nuclear fuel atop permafrost has joined other northern facilities to address future thawing. Uh, you know, as this nuclear waste uh, is going to start, good God, going who knows where. <clears throat> Any slumping or sagging could potentially jeopardize the structural integrity of the agency's nuclear waste containment system. Countless other buildings and even Alaskan cemeteries are now in jeopardy of structural damage <coughs> wrought by destabilized permafrost. Let's do not forget how in 2017 the Svalbard Global Seed Vault otherwise known as the Doomsday Vault, a massive plant and seed, re a massive plant seed repository <clears throat> in Norway flooded after the permafrost on which it was built began to sag. <clears throat> yes, while scientists have discovered a seemingly endless series of terrifying plagues, diseases, and chemicals in both thawing permafrost and melting ice, there is a very, very thin silver lining. The Great Thaw, the Great Thaw, has also revealed long-lost treasures from an earlier time. In 2018, scientists discovered an ancient 18,000-year-old doggo, a doggo, okay, it's probably a wolf, trapped in melting permafrost just outside the Siberian capital of Yakutsk. It still had its lush, velvety coat. This is the silver lining you can get ancient wolf pelts. Researchers have also unearthed mammoths, more wolves, and don't forget Arctic mummies. <laughs> oh boy, 
we do have an editorial correction from Popular Mechanics correction. We have updated this article to clarify that Tibet is not in the Arctic. We apologize for any confusion. And if you enjoyed this story, we have three related stories. Climate change could weaken the U.S. military. How about Alaska's melting permafrost is filled with mercury and climate change could pummel Alaskan infrastructure. Let's see. Oh, here's from the coronavirus front. Two major airlines are ceasing services to China. Yes. Uh, what else we got here? Medical devices loaded with radioactive material. How about airplane poop is dangerous and Doctor suggests head transplants by 2030. Yes, if you don't like your head, in 10 years you will be able to transplant your head onto a new body. Is that as if you don't like your body or if you don't like your head? I'm a little unclear. But I guess is if, if you get fat and ugly, uh, in 10 years from now, if you're fat and ugly, just cut your fat, ugly head off your fat, ugly body and put it on a new, brand new, better body. Anyway, guys, uh, I could go on and on with this, but, uh, <clears throat> well, we were supposed to go kayaking today. Don't think that's going to happen, but we're going to figure out some way to enjoy Fort Myers, Florida, before it goes underwater. And uh, if you enjoyed this quick little chronicle of the collapse, looking ahead for various ways this world is going to end, please take a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not like this dispatch from the end of the world, please take a few seconds to thumb it down. And by all means, come over here and subscribe to uh, Collapse Chronicles and do keep your eye out tomorrow uh, for my interview with Ted Rawl. Ted Rawl pulls no punches about uh, some of the things we can look forward to in the 21st century as the collapse unfolds. That will be coming out tomorrow. So get out there and enjoy it today while you still can. Are you ready to enjoy it while you still can, little dog? Bye, guys.